Good afternoon. Um, I, and I saw the, some person saying they had some trouble understanding me. So I'm going to try to speak um, very carefully in this video. So if it's so if this goes on for about three hours, you know why. So we, we left off with Ennio Morricone, and so st and, and and he also starts off this one with his score for the mission on Vir on Virgin. I also got the CD of this. Much best to remember than the film. I actually see it, but it's not really much worth much to think about. And here's the um, this is music for the John Carpenter's version of the, of the thing. The reverse uh, band release. Well, very kindly reissued by a quartet. And of course, repurposed, I think, for Hateful Eight. I don't think you've seen this movie either. It's not really my microphone of tea. On the other hand, Jerome Ross's The Big Country is this particular. Um, United Artists coupling of two albums peers The Big Country with Alfred Newman's How the West Was Won. So I thought I bought the um the, the two C D release of How the How the West Was Won which was put out on Turn the records and in those enormous camshaft cases which were used to house two CDs in before dual cases were invented. Because we very much more convenient. I also got the um, La La Land release of the big country, which was the official, which was the first official release of the actual film tracks of the oh, fantastic western school. Moving away from westerns completely, the WEA European release of the Spaceball soundtrack, the song soundtrack that came out in 1987, with, with, with the main title and a different take out from the one you hear in the film. And songs from Kim Kahn's and Jeffrey Osborne, Berlin. And Oh. The, the Detroit Spinners, so called, so no, one, so no one would confuse them with a British group also called the Spinners. Let's see, what's that here? The Pointer Sisters and Van Halen and Ladyfire. And two, and two more tracks of John Morris's score as he recorded for this album. It was a very fun mixture. mixture. Of La La Land's um, eventual release of the complete score, complete with the album version as included here. It's great as well. Oh, 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 well, the most successful movie that John Morris did in 1987 was, of course, Dirty Dancing. I 
are staying at John Morris. Um, his music for Will Brooks' remake of, of, of To Be or Not To Be. Now, this thing is on um, Ireland Records, the cassette release, and this also includes um, the Hitler rap, which, kind of, which, which wasn't written for the movie, but it was a single to publicise the movie, which Mel Brooks didn't write. But he, but you can find a video of his top of the pompous performance of all things. I actually led to someone writing in to, I think it was just seventeen, to complain to complain about it because it was exploitative. I'm wondering why no one complained about Rolling Stones. About how no, I mean, why were people complaining when, when the Rolling Stones did that, but you didn't complain about well, Brooks also having that having that kind of use of woman in his video for that song. Now, I know uh, uh, it's overdue for a CD or at least streaming release. Because there was a vinyl release, but I think, but it's not on a CD, unfortunately. I think this did get a CD release. It's kind of alongside the movie. Now this is on the Morgan, Morgan Creek press out in the on on the record label. With some some of Iron Newborn's music, along with some song tracks, kind of a bit of tone look, tone look, sorry, and cannibal kind of cannibal kind of corpse, and Steve Stevens at the start of the proceedings. Yeah, I we we prefer Robert Folk's music for the, for the sequel. Oh, well, I did go to see the movie. I I, I did like it at all. But I was I was not a big fan of it even back then. And the transfer but left. And the transfer of it left left was was iffy even then. I thought so. It's a bit gross. Okay, I would need one. Also did um Dragnet. So his music is 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 the majority of what's on the MCA soundtrack. This is the cassette release, which also has um City of Crime with Tom Hanks and. Uh, and 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 that rapping. Yes, <laughs> sadly you probably never get get it back again. You probably also did the naked gun movies, and this is um the side band's release of. Music for the company Naked Gun and Two and a Half, The Smell of Fear. Oh, what more confusingly, oh, we well, actually combined combined music from that film with the first one as well. And that's another case where I had to sort of make notes in the packaging of which track comes from which film because this combo has this character company the sequel and what has the music from the first film 
So it's all mixed up, unfortunately. So, so La La Land's eventual um, box set of music from, from all three of the films, with each film getting its own disc, was a, was a must get for me. Oh, it's supposed to be fun to listen to this. You all agree with Happy Time. Yeah. Another um another album that MCA gave me a shoe on cassette is um Alfred Newman's music for the greatest story ever told. One most boring that story ever told to go to its proper name, but it was extremely dull. This also got a um an expanded CD release eventually through TCM. That's Turner Classics Music. And it's over there somewhere. Um, it's alright, so well. Oh, it's not, it's, not, it's not as good as the Ten Commandments, it's worse. The, the tracks cassette release of the soundtrack album of Arthur Newman's music for The Rope, the album that came on at the time of the film. Um, this got the, the 20th Century Fox film score treatment. I believe it was expanded as well. So I earned Alfred Newman. So I to David Newman. Um, I got the, um, the, the soundtrack for that regrettable live action movie, for instance, for the suite of music from Alfred Newman's score. It's called the Mesozoic Music. It's just at the end there. Enough of that. Okay, a bit more talking about the thing stands as on the other hand, much better in every single respect. Um this synthesized the music that David Newman did for um Heathers in nineteen eighty eight. Yeah. This is the first Sadman cassette release. Holy Crimson Red Packaging. This is a European release. I mean, licensed through Coliseum and Shadow Platinum. That's another one I had to put the running times in myself. Well, I did get the, um, when I got when I got my first side when gave us a CD reissue, I bought it. Okay, not such a good movie. The ill fated um I Love Trouble. But it's the music song right. Well, considering that I had to rush it to score the film, it was it was such a, a, a late rush job. But, but, but Emma Bernstein, who was actually supposed to do it, was still being credited on the post at the time. But as you can see, Alice the first year's cat is, is, is fact in the in the packaging. So maybe they asked him to do the project or at least ask the advice on who to do it. But he you know, he did eventually work with Shires and Miles. 
I get some of these from the missus. Um, another one for Norris. For a not very good um, fantasy flick. Which, um, the writers of, the writers of Female the Baby actually said, no, I don't, and said, actually decided that like, this would be a better idea than doing the sequel of Female the Baby. The jury is not on that, because this movie wasn't terribly good. Nice enough, not enough music. Was it Strop? It's alright. This is also a very sideband. I guess it could have been worse. Now on to Randy Newman. With his, um, it's called for Barry Levinson's I Hold On. Which was a, a really, really good effective score. Both in the movie and outside. Oh. Here's the oh, let's just here's the reprise records. Set this here. Wonderful. And of course, Awakenings. Very, very, very effective movie, Robin Williams and 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 Mark De Niro. Excuse me, seeing you touching me here. And good score as well. Now, being such in the 60s, I guess I couldn't really try guessing a, a 60s song in here. Too wet. Um, the zombies. Time of the season. Otherwise, it's all. Randy Newman scoring. I I, I know I know songs of his are here. This is, this is before they was doing animated movies. Speaking of which, a bug's life. <laughs> The original Walt Disney sound, original Walt Disney's record soundtrack. I searched for Europe through Needle. Complete with um. The brand new one starting things off vocally. This was good. <laughs> Oh, for the better of the of the dueling, um, animated insect movies. Of the dreamworks, I found our sense of dreamworks probably insist that ants is better, which it isn't. Really, if you must watch an animated um movie involving ants or involving insects, if a creepy in the cast. It should be Dog's Life. <laughs> oh, I did get the the the, the four consideration score promo with more with more music on it. Which is which is always good. And speaking of one with good the natural. One of Brendan Newman's best works, if it's only for the for, for the music when the um the ball hits the grass, it hits, hits the stadium lights. It's more wonderful. Peroxide cassette. Hmm. Rosie of the Days and the Warner Brothers European cassette release of the natural. 
If you do it time first, what is wrong with you? Seriously. Okay, I'm staying with Randy Newman. Um, his music for 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 when there's one Harrod, epics, the paper. It's extremely good. Even even your 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 songs aren't. His songs for this are good as well. I mean, the Naked of Your Mind, the end sings. It was on the price. And of course, there's Parenthood. Hmm. Also on the price records. This is Char Charming Effect. Char Charming Effect. Okay, so this this tip for this film feature you you, you never thought to be a, it's hard to, I just realized that this is the this, is the, this wouldn't be the first this wouldn't be the only film of Keanu Reeves that he would do the music for. Since Randy Newman did also score score all 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 the Toy Story films. And of course, Kelly Reeves sends his voice to the forefront. I'm speaking of Toy Story. Here is the first one. Hmm. This is a gem. Which is definitely a high point for everyone involved. Because they won't get any records except these. All the other Toy Story ones are going to see these, so, so that's the end of Randy Newman. Tom to the one who gets all the Oscar nominations. <laughs> Thomas Newman. He starts off with Green Mile. A cassette release on One of Sunset, One of Sunrise. I never really, I never really got into this one, but it's alright. I'm Josh and Sam. I recall liking this for the last time I heard it. That's for the last time I heard it last. The first sideband release. That's it. And the Linguini and the Linguini incident. She got, got released on the first side band again. I, I, I didn't see the movie, it's rather strange and heavily quirky. Um, and my, 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 my youngest sister actually sent me um, an extremely large poster, poster of, 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 of the movie, like a pin up. Maybe thanks. Maybe because the film started with an arcade. Oh dear. Hmm. Unfortunately, it's very unfortunately it's hard for me to get the picked. Pop. It was too big. It was too big to put on my wall. So I don't, I don't know what happened to it. Where it is. Where it is. Well, I saw an album as an arcade film. It was with Thomas New Music. Um, that's pretty seeking serious then, is over in the CDs, so... I might could use a, a, a proper score release by itself without some um, making this device included. Okay. Okay, so, staying here, Thomas. Um, he only had one track. He only had one track, one score... Q on this on, on the Santa Carnival on the prize. After lots and lots of songs from Eric Clapton, Brian Ferry, Aaron Melville, featuring Robertson, 
Taj Mahal, Marvin Gaye, JJ Kale, Dorothy, Dorothy Moore, and I mean, any others here? Peter Gabriel. I think I believe some of it was. I think, I think some of this score was recorded from one of those Hollywood Hollywood ninety six was it? That, that's where Seb ended. On the other hand, it's like from very effective music for the player. Also in verse uh, band. Well verses anyway. It is most good. And the film was joy good as well. Okay. Okay now uh, um the war on MCA. Now this being a nineteen sixty sets film. You get a lot of music, you know, a lot of songs from the time, but I'm going to refer to the of, of Thomas Newman's score. Songs from like, so, um, okay, the songs are all on side one. So there's Cat Stevens, Aretha Franklin, Janis Joplin, Love and Spoonful, Bobby Hebb. Norman Greenbaum, Richie Havens, The Band, and Diane Ross and the Supremes. So you can probably guess it's, it's the Vietnam War we're talking about in the title. <laughs> but I didn't find this. It doesn't mean. Really I never, really, I never really warmed to, to this one, as opposed to his other um, music for um, a, a film of Winona Ryder, Little Woman. And the film didn't click with me either, to be honest. Yeah, what can you do? That's the way it goes. And that was the end of the Newmans. So here's um Jack Nietzsche's Starman on the first side band see this side band set release complete with um his um okayish score along with a um um Jeff Bridges and um Karen Allen doing a cover version of all I have to do is dream. It's all right, I suppose. I mean, it's got its moments. I do like being tired tall, but it's not really my. It's not, not, not the best thing here.